Last week, we enjoyed a duck that we finished with a flamethrower. This week, we're going to take that extravagant meal and turn it into five or six different meals by separating out the duck fat and making a bone broth from the duck carcass. We're then going to take that bone broth and pressure can it using our brand new electric pressure canner. I can't wait. Come with us. Oh, did I mention that things do not go as planned? Well, they don't. This bad boy is finished. There wasn't really a lot of meat on it, um, but it was delicious. And so what we're doing is uh, taking the leftovers, the carcass, the skin, anything we didn't eat, and it's going straight into my Instant Pot and turn it into broth. So we're going to have duck broth to go with, uh, you know, other dishes in the future. Okay. So um, I always save a, a bag with my uh, veggie trimmings. Um, and put it in the freezer. So there we go. Uh, onion skins, garlic skins, you name it. And uh, here's the uh, remains of our duck. It was delicious. And now it will serve us for, uh, for another meal or two by, by making a delicious broth. I'm tossing the skin and stuff in there. I figure we're going to get some, some really good fat rendered out of it too on top of getting the uh, delicious, delicious broth. We've got some spent herbs, but you know, might as well. Not exactly a great angle. That's probably like mostly fat. I should have just dumped that separately. Mm. Oh well, too late now. I'll skim it off after it's rendered out. Man, that fat is going to be great for my hands. <laughs> I feel so moisturized. <laughs> okay, and juggle. It's our bubbly vat of goodness there. Even with what we lost, we're going to end up with three quarters of a gallon because I think that the. Oh, good. I want to say those are half gallon jars. We got all the fat on the top there. We'll put that in the fridge and skim the fat off. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's the final tally. And if you look at look at this one, look how much of that is just duck fat. And this one too. Like that's just a ton of duck fat. Huh. Poured off all the fat by the time we got to these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this one like has no fat, but it's gonna be like all like like you know viscous when it when it cools. It's gonna be like viscous and gelatinous because we've had all those bones in it. This is gonna be awesome. We're prepping the pot for uh, uh, pressure canning. I fill it the line with water then we put the uh, jars about half filled with hot water in there and we do a jar warm-up cycle there to the fill line This is our first time using this pressure canner, so we're both excited to find out how well it works and uh, we don't know what we're doing.
I know what I'm doing. I'm giving it a try. Okay, let's play a game of where's the plug. There it is. No, it's... Oh, there you go. And according to the directions with wide mouth jars, you, uh... You do four. Although, I don't know what the difference between wide and narrow mouth jar would be for the, uh, footprint of it. But that's what the directions say, so that's what I'm gonna go with. This step is just to warm up the jars before hot packing the uh, duck broth. And for this step, we leave the uh, regulator, the weight, off. Uh. Pressure canner. I'm going to look those quick start instructions again real quick. Okay, now it is warming the jars. That should take about 20 minutes. Okay, now we're going to remove this. Jars are warm. Are warm. Okay, let's see how much room we can do with this. Let's get this over it. This is the duck broth. Yeah, what we do. Okay. Pull out a jar. Carefully fill with duck broth. The instruction said leave about an inch of room at the top, which is about here.
then we have this handy little tool. Shows where an inch is. Oh, just a hair mover. Just below the first thread, I believe. Yep. Clean cloth, run around the rim here. Make sure that there's no, nothing to prevent a good seal. That on it. This on it, just until it just gets snug. Put it back in and do the other three. Regulator, vent, event, can. Okay, quartz process 25 minutes. Apparently that's a step that comes a little later after it comes up to temp. Okay, it has reached temperature. Oh, there we go. Fill jars. Let's uh, light up.
Let's see, I need to set it for 25 minutes. Okay, now it's beeping. So we put this on. Make sure it's centered for canning. Press that. Because that's set for 10 minutes. Does it need to be 10 minutes or does it need to be longer? Supposed to be 25 minutes. Um, it's pushing the dial or here. Let me see if I can put it. Okay. So do it again. E10 air. I think it has to uh, pressure down and then we restart it. So it turns out. If you mess up in the first step and don't set the timer, you can't set it at any other step later on in the process. So after, after having done that, we're on try two. And we went through all of the steps in the process again. But yeah, try two. Let's see if it works this time. Okay, after some misadventures, finally figured out how to properly set the time on this. Um, it had to go through multiple steps that I really don't want to have to rehash at the moment. But essentially it, it uh, warms everything up, then it like brings it up to temperature, then it has you do some other stuff. But right now it's uh, building up the pressure in a moment that regulator will seal and then it'll go through a 25 minute countdown. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's uh, done boiling. Now it's in a cool down cycle, which could take an hour and a half. When it lights up and says done, then we can open it up. Okay, uh, it's beeping. I guess it's cooled down now. And uh, now we have to confirm that the uh, thing is, what are we confirming? Okay, pressure has been released. Okay, and then I think we hit well, it was just done. I pressed it. Okay. Yeah. Then I guess we don't have to hit anything. Let me just... Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. And those cans are still way hot even even though it's released all of the pressure. Does it go the other way? No. Oh, okay. No wonder it broke, I was doing it wrong. Are they just popping down already or? Yeah, they're... They're already popped. Awesome. Now we don't touch them for... Yeah, the lids on the top will, will pop as they cool and... I think... Well, one of them is definitely popped. I'm looking at the other ones. It looked to me like one is definitely popped and the others maybe are getting there. Yeah. Now we let them cool down. We don't touch them for at least six hours. Okay. After six, six to 12 hours, we can uh, test the lids. Anything that doesn't seal, you can reprocess. Okay. 